Hello, I'm the Angry Spork, and we have once again arrived at Batman Day, a celebration of the world's most popular and probably most oversaturated comic book hero of all time. As it's currently Year of the Crossover on my usual show, I figured why not come up with some crossovers for the Dark Knight that we haven't really seen before. Sure, maybe a couple have kind of been done, but maybe not in the way I'm thinking. Now, these aren't really detailed stories I have in mind. Some of them are just kind of flights of fancy, and I haven't thought out the specifics all that much. This is all just for fun. So iron your cape, put on your utility belt, and sharpen those pointing ears as we look at some potential crossovers for the Caped Crusader. Number 1. The Silver Surfer. Maybe this is because I've reviewed Silver Surfer crossing over with Green Lantern and Superman, but I got to thinking of a scenario where the characters just exist in the same universe for the purpose of the story, and the Surfer encounters a mystery he can't solve because he's not really a detective, but has heard of the renowned skills of the Dark Knight, so enlists his help to solving the case. Maybe their repartee would not be the most scintillating, given that one tends to be very quiet and reserved and the other is kind of stoic, but it would be a chance for Batman to investigate something outside his comfort zone. Sure, he's been on alien worlds before, but the actual detective work would be a bit more bare bones, giving him more of a challenge with different cultures and customs to consider that the surfer would likely be able to clue him in on. Number 2. The Ghostbusters Now this could work whether we're talking about the versions from the original movies or the real Ghostbusters cartoon. The basic idea I have is that ghosts would be haunting Wayne Manor, or perhaps a Wayne Foundation building, and someone, Lucius Fox, someone who doesn't know Batman as Bruce Wayne, would call the Ghostbusters to investigate, and they would cross paths with pointy ears, and things would get off to a rocky start. These ghosts, however, appear to be those of Thomas and Martha Wayne, but Bruce, of course, would be reluctant to believe that. Not because he doesn't believe in ghosts or the afterlife, he's been around so he would know better, but because he doesn't think his parents would do this kind of thing. And he's reluctant to admit that he doesn't understand the supernatural, and deep down he thinks there is a slim possibility that something happened to his parents since their deaths that would make them come back all malicious and stuff. I could see him and Egon getting along to a degree, but perhaps having intellectual clashes. He might be annoyed by Peter's ego or not take Ray very seriously because he tends to be like a kid in a candy store when it comes to ghosts. Though Winston, as the kind of everyman among the group, might get along with them better than the others. And I can't help but think that there would have to be a scene where Bruce Wayne meets Janine Melnitz and she kind of gets all flirty and swoony over him. Because, you know, chicks dig Bruce Wayne. Number 3. Ghost Rider. Because, you know, Spirit of Vengeance, Batman is Vengeance. I mean, that's not the only reason I thought to pair them up, it's... Okay, yes, it's the only reason, it's the only thing I can think of, I don't have a story for this. Number 4. Gargoyles. Now, these two properties have a great deal in common. Both involve characters that can soar through the night, heroes that have dealt with everything from muggers to supernatural entities, as well as a distaste for firearms. A new kind of gun? A new way to kill people? And, much like the crossover with the 2012 Ninja Turtles, I would see this version of Batman styled after the animated series. The way I see this working would most likely be that Bruce Wayne is in New York for some reason, and there's some threat that not only requires his deductive skills, but also the might of Goliath's clan. As for what this threat could be, I haven't really given it much thought. It would have to be either be supernatural in nature to require the gargoyles and their experience in that realm, or a rich mad scientist with giant robots. He's been around some weird looking heroes in his time, so I don't think the gargoyles are going to creep him out that much. Although it would be kind of funny if Elisa Maza, who's hung around the gargoyles for years and have gotten used to how they look, would be startled at the appearance of a guy in a bat suit. And, like what I said with Janine Melnitz, maybe Elisa meets Bruce Wayne for a casual dinner, Goliath is watching, and he starts getting himself a little bit of jealousy. And since gargoyles have enhanced senses, I think it wouldn't be long before Goliath figures out that the rich boy is also the vigilante, but promises to keep his secret. Because you know him, he's all noble like that. And how could you pass up a chance of Wayne meeting with Xanatos? Pay a man enough. 
and he'll walk barefoot into hell. Number five, Steven Universe. Yeah, I thought of this more as kind of a fun little joke years ago. Not that it's something that I would actually pitch unless someone was really interested. Essentially, it would be set around the time Steven is still 14 years old. Still pretty young and naive. And people in town have been unusually depressed lately. Each of them have their own problems, one thing or another going wrong, and he's the kind of kid that would want to help, but he just doesn't know how. And one evening he sees a stranger on a bench who also mentions on the doldrums that have taken over Beach City. He even has an idea on how to solve it, and maybe Steven can help him out. And of course this guy, who Steven thinks is a traveling clown with a circus, is the Joker. And how does he lift everyone's spirits? By convincing the whole town to attend a free circus where Joker, naturally, uses his gas on everyone, forcing them into fits of uncontrolled laughter. Bats and one of his sidekicks, I'm imagining Stephanie Brown as Batgirl, simply because I think she might have some fun interactions with Amethyst and they'd get along really well. He'd be investigating where Joker is, why he's in this city, and trying to stop his latest scheme. And there would be an underlying message when Steven helps stop the Joker and get everyone cured. That you can't force people to be happy, you can't force their emotions to be one way or another, just because it might be better for you, or you think it might help. Especially when the supposed happiness and laughter is purely manufactured. Again, this isn't a premise meant to be taken too seriously. Tis all in good fun, you see. And yes, I know Steven and Bats both appear in multiverses. I had this idea long before that anyway. Number 6. Wolverine. It's true Batman did technically meet the X-Men in All Access, the follow-up to the big DC Marvel crossover of the mid-90s, but he only knew them long enough to mop the floor with them, and there was one particular X-Man missing. I did actually have a story written and planned out along this line many years ago, back when I had this funny little thing called Faith in My Abilities. <laughs> oh, I made myself sad. Without getting into too much detail, it would be one of these shared universe crossovers. Wolverine would find himself in Gotham, trailing a certain powerful businessman of his own universe, and he would happen upon a familiar face, Bruce Wayne, as the two met when the rich orphan was traveling the world, training to become the Dark Knight. They'd meet in civilian identities, then again meet in their heroic identities, finding new surprises about each other, and the idea I had made certain references to what was then a bit more recent, like the curing of the legacy virus and some lingering animosity among Gothamites between those who stayed in the city after the big earthquake and those who had left. And while there is some sinister plot in mind involving a certain clown prince of crime, the purpose would be to draw the Dark Knight out, and it would also have a connection to one of Batman's crossovers with Daredevil. Of course, I thought this was a cool idea at the time because, well, I was a kid. But who knows if it would actually work, even with some polish, and omitting certain references that some readers might not remember or even know. And finally, number seven, Zorro. Initially, this slot was going to be this Bat multiverse idea where a bunch of different Batman from across eras and alternate universes would get together to solve a crime that any one of them alone couldn't solve. But then the more I thought about it, the more I figured it was probably going to end up being the premise of Across the Spider-Verse, which I have not seen yet. So I figured instead, why not one of the characters that inspired Bob Kane to create Batman? That was later given a lot of help by Bill Finger. On the surface, that novelty alone makes it an interesting concept. But in execution, yeah, I haven't really thought about it that much. I mean, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about Zorro as a character beyond that Family Channel show when I was a kid. He did show deductive prowess, and he did stand up for the little guy, but it's my understanding Zorro is typically depicted in an era that isn't exactly a wash in the high tech we usually see Batman running around with. So I suppose if you really wanted to do it, we could have a more analog Batman. Like something akin to the Caped Crusader animated series. And you can have some kind of excuse where Bruce Wayne goes to Spanish California during the early 19th century, maybe with some prospective business intentions, and perhaps some villain is trying to get him out of town or trying to assassinate Wayne. So of course Batman decides to investigate, and this brings him at odds with Zorro, where they have the usual each hero mistakes the other for the bad guy, and they fight it out before realizing, hey, we're on the same side, and they start working together. I'm sure there's more you could do with this, and it doesn't necessarily have to take place in the 1800s, 
but it would be a chance for Batman and Zorro to do some more bare-bones detective work instead of relying on bat clue-finding technology or Alfred doing a Google search from the Batcave to help solve the crime. And that's my unscripted entry for Batman Day 2024. Are there any crossovers I omitted that maybe you think could have worked better? Leave it in the comments below and have yourself a good day. I'm the Angry Spork saying take care and God bless.